Today, we're talking about money and specifically my money, which is a topic of interest across all of my social media platforms. And I'd really like to break it down on here because I don't really feel comfortable breaking it down on other social media platforms and have it subject to a wide range of criticism that I don't want to be subject to. So we're going to talk about it today. I constantly get questions about how I afford the lifestyle that I do. Like I'm traveling all the time. I moved to Japan at 20. I moved to New York at 17. And the big, big question is, Ryan, how did you do it? Like I constantly, that's one of my top questions, probably top three that I always get. And I've never officially answered it because it's a lot. It's a big question to unpack. And there's so many things that go into it. And I think a lot of people forget to realize that I was literally broke, B-R-O-K-E, before I started social media. Now I'm a little bit less broke. Like (laughs) I have a little bit of money now. So like it's a lot easier for me to do the things that I do. And it's because of social media, like that's literally my job, which I can break down later on. But first, I want to start out with like how I was surviving living in Japan and how I was surviving living in New York at like 17 and 20 and just like those years of my life when I literally had nothing to my name. I grew up with absolutely nothing, like fucking nothing. And it amazes me to this day that I was able to make it to this point and really make something of myself, which is like pat on the back to me because like that's fucking crazy. I still don't really understand how I did it, but we're going to try to break it down today. So let's start out when I moved to New York. When I was in high school, I knew... I grew up in Roanoke, Virginia, which is like not a very big town. It's like a city of like 100,000 people. And it's not a very good environment. I know everyone says that about their hometown, but like it really, really was not a good environment for me. Like I was never going to be able to thrive there. I didn't ever thrive there growing up. So I grew up with the intention to leave as a lot of people from there do. And but the difference with me is I just knew that it was going to happen. Like no matter what I had to fucking do, it was going to happen. I had to fucking leave. There was no scenario where I was just going to like live there. And a lot of people from my high school just graduate and like become servers at a restaurant, which there's nothing wrong with. But they do that for like years. And that's something that I did not want. Like I wanted to like do more things with my life and see more things and just like be more free to be able to do more things. And so I was extremely motivated to get out of the situation that I was in. And you might think, I think a lot of people might think like, oh, Ryan, he was like really smart in high school, got like a scholarship or something. No, no. Like I was horrible at school. I'm st- I'm still horrible at school. I sucked so bad in high school. I had one year where I missed, I think, 43 days of school and I was on the verge of going to court for truancy because I never went to school. I hated it so much. I was, like, constantly depressed. It was a toxic environment. I hated everyone who went to that school. It was a very, like, rich, preppy, white school that I... And I'm not rich. Like, I did not grow up rich. So, like, it was very hard to constantly be around that. And just, like, the people were not a good environment to be around. Anyway... So I was very, very motivated, but I did not have good grades. Like I had failed, like I think two classes in high school. I consistently had C's. Sometimes I had D's. There was like a year, I think senior year and junior year. Okay, let's start there. Junior and senior year, I really, really doubled down on my grades and was like, I, I, mind you, I was in really easy fucking classes, like easy fucking classes. I did not take like pre-AP or AP classes or any of that shit. But I tried really hard for the classes that I was in to get good grades. And I was finally able to get like all A's and B's in junior and senior year. And if I didn't do that, I don't know what the outcome would be today. I mean, maybe I still could have gotten into college. Maybe I wouldn't have. But so senior year comes around and I am manically applying to like literally every college that I can find on the Internet. I think I ended up applying to 20, somewhere between 20 and 30 colleges online which was really hard because I had no idea how college worked like growing up my mom didn't go to college until like later in life and she went to like community college my dad went to community college um everyone in my life really in my immediate family didn't have any experience going to like an actual university so I did not have any sort of tools to be able to like figure that out and navigate it and especially when it comes to paying for college that was the hardest fucking part because What I did senior year, 
I was glued to my computer every single day, constantly researching how the fuck do I go to college and how the fuck do I leave my hometown and move away and figure all of this shit out when I have no fucking money. And basically, the answer was pretty plain and simple. Like, I did not have the money to go to school. My family didn't have the money to send me to school. And... I was offered to go to community college, which is free for two years, and then like transfer to a four-year school, which I still wouldn't have the money for at that point, but I wanted to get out immediately. Like that was the only thing, that was the only option. That's what was going to happen. So I applied to so many fucking schools, so, so many fucking schools, and I don't know how I guess my essays were good or something and a lot of the schools I applied to obviously had like higher acceptance rates I wasn't applying to fucking Harvard and Yale over here but I got into almost every single school that I applied to which I was really surprised about some of them I even did get scholarships for however I was very much set on going to school in New York City because it was the nearest city that I could get to and I dreamed of living there since I was in like eighth grade because who doesn't want to fucking live in New York City at some point in their life like that was a big dream of mine and so I applied to a lot of schools there and I also had to apply for financial aid because I again didn't have any money to go to school and if you're not American financial aid is like a government aid program for students in lower income families and there's different amounts of money that you can just be given and then there's also like loans that you'll be given that are federal and then there's federal loans which are better than private loans because of interest rates and repayment plans and it's a whole spiel and thing that I could get into but we're not going to get into that right now so I was applying for financial aid and I noticed all of the schools that I was applying to the ones that were giving me the most money were the private schools which was really surprising because private schools are really fucking expensive like all the private schools that I was applying to were probably 70 to 80 thousand dollars a year which is so far out of my budget like I couldn't even afford like a thousand dollars to go to school like I had no money nothing like literally nothing and so I was like how the fuck am I going to do this applied for financial aid these private schools were giving me like massive scholarships to go even though my grades weren't good and they were literally just giving away fucking money they like cut their tuition in half by giving you like this fake money as and like claim it to be like a scholarship and it's not even a scholarship it's just like a discount on tuition that they're not actually losing any money on like they're not giving you cash for it and so the tuition because of my income and my household would be cut down to like half of what that was which if it's eighty thousand dollars still forty thousand dollars that's a lot so um i did get something called a pell grant which is like sixty five hundred dollars a year Um, from the government and then the rest had to be covered in student loans like that was the only way I could pay for school so that's exactly what I did and the only student loans that you can get in your name is like five thousand five hundred dollars per year but if you take out something called a parent plus loan that's like unlimited like they can your parent can take out as much money as you need to cover the rest of your expenses which includes housing and food and like other expenses on top of that and you get like what's called a refund check after a few weeks into the semester and they send you a lump sum of money to kind of just like live off of during the semester of course you have to pay all of this money back in the future which i was really terrified of very very terrified of but i was willing to make that risk because i knew that it would pay off in the end and i would get way more opportunities using that risk than if i was to just stay at home and not take that risk so I took out a pretty big chunk of student loans over the course of a few years, and I moved to New York, got my refunds um, through financial aid in like fall and spring every semester, and those helped me to live off of, but I was still broke like all the time. I had no fucking money to like really do anything. Like all I could do was eat. I could get groceries. I could take the train when I needed to. Couldn't really do anything else. I could never buy clothes, like nothing extra like that was my life for like a few years I definitely I mean that's the average like student lifestyle I guess but my parents or my mom didn't give me really any money throughout that time like my mom can't afford to give me any money and I just like was on my own I was living in New York I was able to move there in the first place because my sister offered to drive me there with my stuff and that's how I was like physically able to move to New York and that was like I wouldn't have been able to do that without like my sister's help. And so, yeah, I was fucking broke. I worked many jobs while I was in New York and it helped a little bit. 
a little bit, but like honestly not that much because I really wasn't even able to work that much because I had so much school. And yeah, that would it was definitely a major struggle living there and not having much money to live off of because especially going to the private school that I went to, everyone that I knew there and the friends that I made there and the roommate that I ended up with, they all just had families who gave everything to them. Like they just had an allowance or a credit card or something that I could, they could put everything on and live their life to like the fullest in New York City. And I was just not in that situation. And that made me really bitter and angry for a really long time because I didn't deserve that. Like I did nothing to not be given what everyone else was, or at least all of my peers were. And that was so mentally challenging for me because I wanted to experience life to the fullest and I wanted to be able to do all these things. And like, I finally achieved my dream of like living in New York, but like, I not, I don't want to say that I was miserable because I don't think I was miserable, but like there were definitely periods where I was really depressed because I literally couldn't do anything. Like I was paying, my rent was so expensive. It was like $1,300 a month for the first year. And I was only able to pay that because of my tuition refunds at school. And those like, even just that, like I was breaking even, like I was literally breaking even anytime I paid rent, like I had no money left. And so I had to be so frugal all the time, which does something to you. Like that is so depressing and not a fun way to live, which I'm sure many people know, many people have experienced, a lot of you might have experienced this. And I just, I, my childhood, and that's another episode, but like I was dealt a very sad and bad set of cards, if I do say so myself. And it was not fun and it was not a good position to be in. And I still face repercussions from that like every single day. And I was very mad at the world about that. Anyway, moving on. We're like veering off topic a little bit. But like, yeah, I was very frugal when I lived in New York. But I was able to save some money at the same time because I was getting these tuition refunds and I wasn't bawling on them. Like, I know a lot of people who get these refunds and just like spend it on like clothes and like designer stuff and like just anything that they can fucking buy that they want. And I was not doing that. Like, I was very, very frugal and I'm very thankful in some ways for the childhood that I had because I was taught to be very, very frugal for my entire life. So I knew how to do that. And I continued that for years. And over the course of three years, I had, I want to say like $10,000, $15,000 just like sitting in my bank account, which kind of led me to have some flexibility. And mind you, this is not just like money that I had. Like this was like my student loans that were sitting in a bank account that I had access to. I still had to pay these back like in the future, but it was money that I had my hands on and I was willing to spend if it got me a better opportunity. So after a few years of living in New York, I started to fucking hate it. I was over it. My roommate was like so horrible. That's another story. And I just hated my fucking life there so much. And everything was a struggle, especially with how much money I had and was able to spend So I decided I wanted to leave and all of my classes were online. So I was able to do so. And I picked up and I moved back to Virginia, but not home. I moved to Richmond, Virginia for a few months and I subletted an apartment there because I had friends that lived there and just wanted to experience like living somewhere else and maybe try living in a college town. And I thought maybe I was going to transfer to the college that was there, but I did not end up doing that. They took like literally none of my fucking credits when I tried to transfer And I'm glad that I didn't transfer there because eventually I got into school to transfer in Japan. And it was an American school in Japan. So I was able to use my financial aid. I was still going to get an American degree. They took a bunch of my credits. So I was like, this sounds fucking incredible. Like I have a little bit of money right now to spend on like the plane ticket, start off getting an apartment. Like rent is pretty affordable in Japan. My first apartment was like $480 a month, which is way less than what I was paying in New York. So I was ecstatic about it. And I started that whole process, whatever. And I moved to Japan. I moved to Tokyo with what, like $10,000 in my bank account. And I knew that if I just kept going to school, I would keep getting like the refunds from financial aid. And that was basically my source of income for a while and how I was surviving until I started doing social media and my social media took off like very quickly. And that became my main source of income now. And I don't even take out any student loans when I go to school at this point. Um, 
and which I'm like, it's that's so crazy to think about because throughout my college years, like I lived with so much burden just knowing that I had all these student loans on my back and I don't think that's something that anyone understands unless you you have them and you are in that situation because you constantly feel like you really can't ever plan a life ahead of you because you hear all these horror stories about like how much you're literally going to have to pay a month which is like rent just for going to college and it's like you're never gonna have any sort of money to be able to ever live your life because you're going to be paying off these loans for the rest of your life anyway So that was really fucking depressing. And I just kept fucking going because I was already so deep into my student debt that I was like, there's no point in turning back now. Like I might as well get this fucking degree. And so that's what I did. And then I started doing social media. I started making a little bit of money off of that. And I'm, I can say now I'm almost at a point where I think I can like literally pay off my student loans, which is actually insane like I never thought that I would be able to say that in like a million years so I am like so grateful that that is that burden is almost like off of my back and it's like I don't know like now it still feels weird because it's like even though that burden is off of my back it's there's always like the what's next like I don't just have like I can't just pay all these loans off and then just like have money forever like I still have to make money in the future so I don't know. That's another topic. But like, that's how I afforded going to college and all these places and going and moving around so much. And I was just very frugal with my money and I was getting financial aid. Um, I did pretty much always work like while I was in school. I always had a job when I was in New York. It was obviously a lot harder to have a job when I moved to Japan. I worked as an English teacher for like one day and I absolutely hated it. Like it wasn't even worth the money for me. So I did not continue it. And I also did a little bit of modeling. Um, I don't know why I said that. Like, I literally did, like, one job and got paid, like, $200 for it. But, um, yeah, that's how I stayed afloat. That's how I fucking stayed afloat in New York City and Tokyo. And everyone asks me that question because I think that they want to kind of, like, replicate what I did and just, like, do the same thing. And... While I think that's a great option and it can definitely open a lot of doors for you and it did open a lot of doors for me. Like if I didn't do any of this, I would not be where I am today. I would not have my social media. I would not have anything that I've built, any of the money that I've made, like nothing. And so I'm really glad I made that decision. However, it is a huge burden to put yourself in and not everyone gets as lucky as I did. And I, I, I just like don't want to influence anyone to ever make a decision like that and say like, oh, you should go to school and take out like a bunch of fucking student loans and you'll be so much happier because I wasn't really happier. I can't say that I was 100% happier because I was miserable a lot of times and me living in all these different places and like being able to travel and do these things did not make me happier whatsoever. Like, yeah, I felt a little bit more free and I love my independence and I was able to really explore that at such an early age. And that was great. It did make me happy though. Like I, moving to Japan, it was fun. Like the first few months that I got there, it felt kind of like a vacation, but then I was in school and it just literally felt like fucking school, which I always hated. And I would go home do homework, go to school, do school, go home, do homework. And like the cycle repeated. And I, you can't really enjoy these places if you're like going to school there as much as you would if you're like on vacation. So living there and going to school there is different from just visiting. And I think that's important to note because I definitely moved to Japan on like a manic episode. Like I, sorry, I'm like literally fucking burping in between these sentences, but I moved to Japan on a manic episode like I very sporadically chose to do that and it was like a month before I did I didn't even know that I'd be doing that and while I'm really glad that I did it was a very quick and rash decision that I did not have everything planned out and I was just like oh Japan like so exciting I literally always wanted to study abroad there never thought I would because I didn't have the money to do so finally figured out a way and I ended up moving there and after a few months, the the novelty, like, is that the right word? I don't know. Novelty, it wears off. Like, you do not have as much fun as you do in, like, those first three months that you live there and everything is new and exciting. And I was just, like, so ecstatic in those first few months and everything was just so, like, incredible when I first moved there. And I, I don't regret that decision whatsoever, but I think, like, 
I think I just definitely have like some issues with mania where I make decisions very quickly. And I think that explains a lot of the things that I do. I think that could literally explain like why I'm in fucking Bali, Indonesia right now. Um, and I just think a lot of people are quite different from me when they, when it comes to making decisions. And a lot of people are very reliant on their family and friends and the city that they live in and have all these factors, but that I'm not tied down to, like, I've never been close to my family. I've never been close to many friends in my whole life. I, I absolutely wanted to leave the city I grew up in. So I really don't have any of these factors ever like tying me down to one place. So I'm just kind of been like, it's always been like a no brainer for me to just like move to these different places and travel because it's like, I never have anything to fucking lose. Like I am not missing out on anything. If I leave, like I'm just going to continue being miserable. So I pick up and fucking go somewhere else where I'll have fun for a few months and then figure it out. But yeah, in terms of like, now I want to kind of delve into like how I've afforded everything now that I do social media and I'm not living off of student fucking loans anymore. And I actually have like an income. So I, to start out, I'm still pretty frugal with my money, which I know looks like it's hard to believe, but I do everything that I do very cheaply. Like I am able to travel the world and I think people forget, but a lot of people know how, like, if you're in Europe and you travel throughout Europe, but you're already there, it's so cheap. Like, the flights are so cheap. And I think people forget that the same goes for Asia. Like, if you're in Japan, you can go anywhere in Asia for, like, $200 or less. Sometimes you can go to, like, Australia. And, like, it's very cheap. Like, and the Airbnbs are cheap. The cost of living is cheaper. Doing everything pretty much is cheaper. And so I have been able to do that and live frugally at the same time, which I'm very grateful for. And it also creates more income for me over time because I'm making content out of it. And that just like anything, any money that I spend into like these trips and like my apartment and things that I'm doing always makes a profit, always makes a profit no matter what it is. And I can break down like, so I'm in the TikTok creator fund, which the you, the old one was literally horrible, like so bad. And I would make like pennies a day, even though I was getting millions and millions of views. And then they made a new creator fund. And I, for months, was missing out on it, actually, because I had a problem with my American phone number that I couldn't get access to that was tied to my TikTok account. So I could not get into the new creator fund for months. And I missed out on thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, which is fucking crazy. And it still makes me mad whenever I think about it. But when I eventually did get into the creator fund, I saw, and I want to say this was like early August, which is like pretty late into, like I started social media in January and only August, it really started to pick up with the amount of money I was making. And, um, up until then I was just living on like my YouTube AdSense, which was doing pretty well. And I was making a sustainable income off of that. And then I had like brand deal here and there, and I was definitely getting good brand deals on YouTube for a while. So that was keeping me afloat for the time being. And then the new creator fund came out on TikTok, and it almost is like perfect for like the type of content that I make, because for the new creator fund, you have to have your videos over one minute long for them to qualify. And there's a lot of factors that go into it, but it was literally my exact content. My videos are always over a minute long. Um, I literally get like millions of views every single week. And so I was like, this is literally perfect. Like I can actually make like a sustainable income off of this and just like keep what I've been doing, making no money off of it on TikTok. And now I'm actually going to make money off of it. Like this is amazing. So that's what I did. And in the first month, Actually, the first two weeks of me, I'm going to say a number here and I'm going to go out on a limb and say like a number of how much money I made because I don't know. I feel like I feel safe and I can say I can say this here. But the first two weeks I went to Vietnam with like I wasn't even I was just having fucking fun. Like I wasn't even trying to like go viral or like do anything that was crazy. I was just like doing my normal little thing and like having fun in Vietnam and like really enjoying it. And this was like right after I had joined the new creator fund and immediately after, thank God I did this when I, before I went to Vietnam, because I would have missed out on even more money again. But when I first did that and I went to Vietnam, sorry, I've said that so many fucking times. Let's get to the point. I 
made in the first like two weeks, I think maybe one week. It was either one week or two weeks. I made $10,000 on the TikTok creator fund, which blew my fucking mind. I was like, I cannot believe I can make this, this type of money on, on this account. Like I'm literally just like having fun and the money is just like coming after. And it was actually insane to me, but I had to keep in mind that that was like a very viral moment for me. So it's not every week that I'm making $10,000, like absolutely not. And then next month I made way less than that. I think the first month in total on the creator fund, I made 14. And then the next month I made like way less than that, but I had like a brand deal that kind of evened it out. So, um, yeah, I definitely am making like sustainable income or substantial income at this point on just TikTok, which is like really great. And then of course I have my YouTube. I'm starting this podcast now. I'm not making any money on this podcast, nor am I like really interested in that right now, but I'm really trying to like set myself up to have something that's like sustainable, but TikTok is not the most sustainable thing to rely on. And it can be scary at times, like seeing that amount of money that I'm making and knowing that like one month can be way, way less than like the last. So I'm still, because of that, I try to be like extremely smart with my money and I'm still very frugal with like everything that I make. And I try to do everything as cheaply as possible while still being able to like create content because for the content that I make, I do have to spend a little bit of money to be able to make it, but it always makes a profit. So I'm very smart about it. On top of that, I opened like a retirement account when I was like 18 because I was really, for some reason I was like really fixated and interested in personal finance. Like, I don't know why that was like a niche thing for me, but I was obsessed with it. And I had, I started like a high yield savings account and I started a retirement account. Mind you, they're not like built up that much. And I've like stopped investing and started investing like a few times, but like, I like to say that I'm very smart with my money and I've definitely had many times on social media where I've had a lot of people like come at me for like how much money they think that I spend and it's like they just have no idea like how much money I'm making because I'm for how much money I'm making I'm not spending a huge chunk of it like I'm definitely a lot more comfortable now and I'm it makes me so much happier that I can like literally go to fucking like Starbucks and get a coffee and not like shit myself thinking about how like oh that like sounds like a a coffee thing but like no think about how much money I spent on literally just a cup of coffee like that would kill me like every time I did anything that I enjoyed before I like started making money I felt so guilty like all the time because I was like you I'm literally not allowed to enjoy anything because I don't have the money to do it and now that I do it's like it makes me so happy to just like have that freedom suddenly. And on top of that, I have like savings that I'm able to like continuously like increase on and like eventually pay off my student loans. And yeah, there's a lot that goes into social media and it's not just like, sponsorships like I feel like a lot of people just think like oh the way you make money on social media is through sponsorships and no like I make money on YouTube I make money on TikTok I make money on brand deals on YouTube and TikTok and um I I I don't think I've ever done a brand deal on Instagram because I I really don't have a huge audience on Instagram compared to my other platforms but yeah that's that's the spiel that's like how much money I a loose idea of like how much money I make that's not like the number that I said is not how much money I make every single month like it it, like I said it varies but overall I've just like over years of like work and opportunity and luck and just a bunch of different factors I've been able to get to a point where I'm really able to call this my job and say that I have a job and say that I have a pretty good paying job right now which is like something that I did not think that I would be able to say in like a million years. Like it's so strange to me whenever I just sit here and think about like how I got in this position, because this is what I dreamed of for so long. Like I wanted to do social media and just make money off of it. Cause that's what I did with my time. Like I was so like, I was like a fucking loner, independent introvert child. And all I did was watch influencers and YouTubers. And naturally that became my fucking dream. And I, I remember like I would literally sit in my room in like high school and start crying. I would literally start crying because I wanted their life so bad. And I guess I wanted it bad enough to the point that I was able to achieve it too, which is weird. Um, Some, I mean, there's always people above you though. Like I'm, 
definitely stuck in comparison. Like even I'm, even though I make like X amount of money right now, I still compare myself to people who make four times the amount that I do. And sometimes they do less work than I do. And that like is really upsetting. And I don't know. I don't want to get off into like that topic of like comparison. That's another episode. But like, yeah, that's how I've afforded my life to the point that I've gotten it. And um, I am pretty proud of myself for the way that I've managed my money. And I know like the whole student loan situation is like a pretty heavy and sensitive topic for a lot of people and it did pay off for me in a sense like I'm very happy that I made that decision and I'll never ever regret taking out a bunch of student loans because it got me to where I am today if I didn't do that I think I'd still be stuck living in Roanoke Virginia and so I don't want to influence anyone to make that decision or do that but um, if you were in a situation like me then maybe it would work for you and maybe that will help you get out of a situation that may not be the best possible scenario for you but yeah I feel very lucky that I've gotten to this point but it's also taken a lot of hard work and a lot of self-education and that's what I'll say like I have taught myself so much via like YouTube and TikTok and just research about like how to manage my finances and like what to do with my life and having a lot of work ethic to get myself to that point and being able to have a mature outlook on money and how I should be spending it and how I should be making it as well and how to create a sustainable income for myself. I feel like I've rambled a lot this episode into a lot of different topics. Okay, my camera died, but if you're listening to the audio, doesn't matter. I do want to say everything happens for everyone differently. And I think a lot of people want to know about like my financial situation and whatnot so that they can, you know, like recreate kind of what I did. And I can't promise that that's going to happen for everyone. And I think it's important to take note, but obviously I want to say dream big, dream as big as you can and keep following your dreams because eventually it worked out to some extent for me. Being delusional worked out to some extent for me. So follow your dreams. That's the end of the episode. I love you. Bye.